This workflow is going to look at the model builder tool inside of InfoWorks. In InfoWorks here in 2024, on the left hand side of the screen, we have the model builder tool to select. We navigate to the part of the world, to the city that we want. We can give it a model name. So I'm choosing Sydney. This is Spit Bridge that we're going to be doing an InfoWorks conceptual design on. I'll choose the coordinate system and navigate to Australia. I'll choose the map grid of Australia 2020 zone 56. And then I can also draw a rectangle or a polygon or import an Esri shape file to better define the area that I want. Once that's done, I'll hit create model and that will now go and pull down those various data sources. So once this is done, you'll see an InfoWorks, the model type popping up. I can choose to save it locally or on the Autodesk Construction Cloud on Autodesk Docs. I can navigate to my project hub, to my project folder, and then that will save the model to the Construction Cloud. Here, inside of the model, we can see the properties that it is downloaded. So we have the coordinate system, we have the extents of the model, terrain information, should we want to stylize it? We can also add the model time, and down the bottom here, we have the road design standards. We can choose this to be on the left-hand side of the road, given it's Australia. And if we have installed, we can add a country kit. If you want to add more details, extensions, libraries, and updates to your InfoWorks 2024, they're available in the manage.autodesk.com account. So you can download and install those country kits. Plus you have extensions like the PAR editor, the Revit InfoWorks updaters, and it will also note when you need to do updates with your InfoWorks services. So with that, I'm going to apply it and I have my topography, my aerial imagery, my roads, my buildings, and these are all highlighted in the Model Explorer. So we can go through and look at turning on and off certain parts of the Model Explorer. We have the light bulbs, the locks, there's a little building, there, uh, little building annotation there where you can show more information. Here I want to go down to the surface layers and look at the coverage areas. So if I turn on and off the light bulb, it will show what's assigned to the coverage areas. Um, I can delete information from here if I don't need it, or I can lock the coverage areas. And then in the top corner here, I can use the window select to grab all of those items that aren't locked down, and I can remove them from the model. Now for this particular workflow, it's going to be used for a visualization workflow, so I don't need all that information. I can also replace the aerial imagery. So it's a raster image. This one came from Bing Maps. I can replace it with a local data provider. So I can delete the one from the ground imagery, and now I have my topography showing here. I can go to data sources, and I can navigate down to raster, and then load in from the construction cloud, the geolocated aerial image. This one is from near map. I have it assigned to ground imagery. I can then assign it to the coordinate system. And because it's from a local data provider, it's GIS located. This will drape perfectly over the model. It's exactly aligned to the topography and it has more detail within that aerial image. So this is how you can build with the model builder, refine that model, and then you can also sync it to the cloud. Up here in the top right hand corner, because we're saving it to the construction cloud, not to our desktop, we can sync it. It's going to highlight changes. I can give it a description. I've added a new raster map. And then with that model, others can view it on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Here we have the model. It's viewable as a 3D model with the raster image ready for others to check out.